Good evening. I'm Lakeisha Ligon. And I'm Victor Williams. On September 18th, the Alumni Association hosted a wonderful event that was held in Unity Plaza outside the Student Center. The event included school spirit from the cheerleading team, food, a photo booth, and many more fun activities. How much pride do Georgia State students really have? Our own Jared Oliver set out to find how spirited students feel and reasons why they do or don't attend certain school events such as football games. There are over 30,000 students that attend Georgia State University. Today we've decided to ask students and players about their opinions about team spirit on campus. How do you feel about school spirit around Georgia State University? Well, since I'm um, closer to the end of my experience at Georgia State, I could definitely say it's improved since when I, um, when I first came here about three or four years ago. But it's still not really where it should be, you know what I'm saying? But it takes time. I mean, we still, we're still improving a lot with our uh, sports teams, you know, like football or whatever. You know, we finally got some wins. We're expanding a lot in the uh, downtown area. So, you know, Georgia State's becoming more synonymous with downtown. So I feel like in time, it'll, uh, It'll get where it needs to be, you know. We're still relatively new in terms of a lot of things. Yeah. How do you feel about school spirit at Georgia State University? Um, I think it's actually kind of lacking. I tend not to feel very excited when I go to football games. I haven't actually gone to one this year. Why, why not? Because I feel like we're just going to lose and I'm going to be disappointed and I'm just going to be like, why did I come and waste my time? All right, how you doing, Jamar? Can you tell me your take on pretty much the school spirit around campus? Uh, I like the school spirit. Everybody come come to the games for us, like all athletic for us, football, basketball, track. All right, sorry, on your name? I'm Jalen Brown. All right, what do you think the student body can do to improve school spirit around campus? Uh, I think something that we could do is uh, really get the attention of all the students, uh, pretty much everybody that shows up to the games. One of the reasons Georgia State joined the Sunbelt Conference is to increase their student attendance at football games. The NCAA has a minimum requirement of 15,000 students in attendance. This is Jared Oliver, GSTV News. October 6th through the 12th will be one of the most exciting weeks of the year. With the football season in full effect, homecoming week will be welcomed by all students at Georgia State University. There will be a variety of events to cater to every student on campus. The events range from community service events like the food collection drive to the Royal Court Ball. Visit homecoming.gsu.edu for a full list of scheduled events. Spotlight presents this year's Royal Homecoming Ball, and it's right around the corner. But first, we must talk attire. This is to wear or not to wear. For my ladies, maxi skirts, bodycon dresses, and jumpsuits are not acceptable. And for my gentlemen, no jeans, fitted caps, and remember to wear dress shoes. Our female model is wearing a nude Sherry Hill design with the silver sequence underlay. I love the three-quarter length of the dress because it's perfect for a night of dancing at the fabulous Fox Theater. Our male model is wearing a slim fit Michael Kors tuxedo, a frame lapel with a classic bow tie. Please make sure you all dress appropriately, but most importantly, make sure you all have a wonderful time. Don't forget to get your tickets because they're going fast. It's $10 for GSU students and $15 for guests. Hope to see you all there. What are the plans to transform and remodel Turner Field? We sent out Akeem Balaam to see what's new and the latest on Georgia State's plan with it. Traffic is sort of heavy on Cortland Street now, but I happen to be standing near one of the Georgia State Blue Route buses that transfers students to Turner Field, a major parking destination for students that happen to commute daily to campus. And if GSU has its wish, that area around Turner Field will soon be used for much more than just for student parking. It all began last year when the Atlanta Braves announced its intentions to depart from Turner Field for a new stadium and entertainment complex in Cobb County. Turner Field has been in use since 1996 when it served as the primary stadium for that year's Olympics. Georgia State originally denied its interest in purchasing the property before making its intentions known when it made an initial proposal to the city of Atlanta that owns the land. I feel like purchasing um, Turner Field would be a positive thing for the school, probably um, help the school spirit. So um, just your, um, if you could just give your like your overall opinion on what you think of, uh, of Georgia State's plans to purchase Turner Field? Well, it really depends on what they plan on doing with it. Right now, they're actually buying a lot of property around Atlanta, and for the most part, no one really knows what they plan on doing with it. Georgia State's $300 million proposal includes for Turner Field to be retrofitted into a new 30,000-seat stadium for the football team. A new baseball stadium would also be built on the current parking lot that was once the home of the previous Braves ballpark, Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. The proposal also includes expanded student housing, parking, 
and retail space. What about the, um, some of the specifics of the plan, like retrofitting Turner Field into a football stadium? I think that would be good because um, Georgia State will have something to call their own instead of feeling like they have to share something, you know, with somebody else. So I don't think that's going to work out too well at all. What about the um, not only the football and the and the baseball plans, but also the plans to have the expanded student housing as well as the um, the parking and the retail space because that's supposedly in the proposal as well. Expanded student housing. I can kind of see that GSU has traditionally been a commuter school, but as it's starting to gain a little more prestige, more and more students, more and more traditional students are choosing to stay here. I mean, you can see that with the commons and the lofts are always, almost always full. This has raised questions of if Turner Field will be ready to host GSU football games in 2017, given that no home games have been scheduled yet, and since the current deal with the Georgia Dome expires after 2016, when it is expected to be the Georgia State and University President Mark Becker have been identified in various reports as wanting to break ground on the Turner Field site in early 2017. But a university spokesman recently described the plan date as being, quote, extremely premature, unquote. Reporting from the corner of Gilmore and Cortland Street, Akeem Balam for GSTV News. President Obama made a special visit to Atlanta on Tuesday, September the 16th, to get an update on the Ebola virus patient placed at Emory Hospital. Obama specifically visited the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, better known as the CDC. Now, if you're familiar with the Ebola virus, you'll know that it's a respiratory disease that is incurable. Spring semester of 2014, students were very curious about the colorful construction that was taking place in the university library. Now that construction is complete, students and staff alike are able to use the curve. The curve is a facility that encourages visual learning and research among the Georgia State population. There are many different interactive tools that can be used in this learning center, like 3D scanners, a 24-foot interactive wall, PC and Mac workstations, and an 84-inch 4K resolution workstation. Taxi drivers are upset with Uber drivers. We turn to our correspondent to find out why. Metro Atlanta taxi drivers are filing a lawsuit against Uber, a popular ride-sharing service in Atlanta. The taxi drivers are concerned for their loss of revenue, while Uber has been conducting services without certified licenses. We spoke with taxi drivers to discuss the impending lawsuit that directly affects them. Due to the sensitivity of the lawsuit matter against Uber, the taxi drivers chose not to reveal their names. We pay tax every day to this state. We pay for the numbers. Those numbers you see on the cab, we pay heavily for them. We also took a ride with an Uber driver to get his opinions on Uber's company regulations and business practices. It's a lot cheaper than taxi, convenient, um, people love it. A GSU student and frequent user of Uber shared her thoughts about the lawsuit between the Atlanta taxi drivers and Uber. The thing about Uber is that they really make it convenient for students and people who do want to go out. Um, so I think that Uber will just have just as good of a case as well. Uber has released a statement defending the rights of their riders, drivers, and their right to competition. There is yet to be a court date to be released. My name is Deborah Pierre reporting for GSTV News. The GSU Fire and Campus Safety Carnival will be held on Thursday, September the 25th from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Heard Park. The carnival will teach students how to manage multiple disastrous situations, all while maintaining a social connection as well. If you would like to learn more information, please contact Keith Sumas via email at ksumas1 at gsu.edu. Many college campuses have to deal with the threat of sexual harassment on their campus. Here's correspondent Jamal Goss with news on what Georgia State is doing to tackle the serious issue. There's nearly 33,000 students that attend Georgia State University, and a portion of those students will have either been sexually harassed against or will be sexually harassed against. The disturbing part of it all is they won't even have known that a crime has been committed. Located in the GSU Student Center, we spoke with Assistant Dean of Students, Jeray Gillespie, to better understand just what is sexual harassment. But sexual harassment is based on any kind of gender, and so it's any unwelcome conduct based on gender, any particular stereotypes, those types of things. While sexual harassment is not avoidable, the best thing to be is aware of what it is. Identify what sexual harassment is uh, by looking through our sexual misconduct policy and then when it occurs know how you can report it. 
uh, and also the resources are, that are available for you should it happen. Madalena Jonasons says her friend has been sexually assaulted. They're not able to express their emotions as they used to before, and they're more like close, so they're not as open as they used to be before, and it kind of has affected our relationship as friends. Mark Rabodi had this to say. School should be a safe learning environment. It should be a place where everybody can just go on to their thing without, you know, harassment. So who exactly do you reach out to? I'm going to contact the Office of the Dean of Students. Reporting sexual harassment is not only helpful for the person being harassed, but allows the university to respond appropriately. It's important for you um, as a student um, because what happens is it allows you to continue uh, to be a student and not have to think about those things and, and be in adverse situations. Support services are available where the students choose to report the violation to the university or to law enforcement. I'm Jamal Goss for GSTV. Are you a student who just so happens to be on the housing waiting list? If so, you'll be happy to learn that Georgia State University will be opening more on-campus housing facilities in the near future. The new housing plans include replacing the Gourmet Services building on Piedmont Avenue. This location will not only be close to campus, but will also be newly renovated and similar to Patton Hall. These plans are scheduled to take effect within the next two years. Let's see what artists came out for Music Midtown and if the concert was worth the hype. Just this past weekend, the grassy hills of Piedmont Park you see here were flooded with over 150,000 separate people across the two days that Music Midtown took place. With the help of near-perfect weather and the decision to double the number of headliners since last year, Music Midtown brought in record numbers. Some of the most anticipated artists were John Mayer, Iggy Azalea, Lord, B.O.B., Eminem, Bastille, and Lana Del Rey. While most regarded Jack White and John Mayer as the two favorite performances of day one, the biggest complaint was that the two took place at the same time on opposite sides of the park, forcing fans to choose between the two talented soloists. Raving reviews came in for both Bastille and Eminem, who played crowd-pleasing music the second day until the very last second they were on stage. Even the lead singer for the lesser-known 21 Pilots wowed new audience members with his death-defying stage climb in the middle of his set. Perhaps one of the only negative points about day two was the anticlimactic performance by Lana Del Rey, who was reportedly sick all last week, having to cancel most of her shows in Europe. All things considered, this year's Music Midtown was a massive success that will have fans everywhere waiting for next year's lineup. With GSTV, I'm Evan Newsom. Well, that's all for us tonight. Thank you for watching this edition of Panther Report. Be sure to check us out online at gstvonline.org as well as panther underscore report on Twitter. Also, be familiar with the Facebook page Panther Report. And also, please visit us online for stories not featured on tonight's broadcast. I'm Lakeisha Williams. And I'm Victor Williams. Have a good night.